welcome back to a special edition Attack Hind show. Super excited about today's episode. We have special guest Matt Bush, licensed illustrator for Lucasfilm. He's got some very cool artwork I can't wait to show you. But more importantly, we're going to touch base on his fantastic trilogy that's coming out, Aladdin 3477. We might be able to even bring you some exclusive footage from it. So we're going to go knock on the door and see if he's here. This is Attack Hind show Cribs Edition. <laughs> What's up, Attack yeah. on the Show? How are you How's doing? It oh my gosh, how's it going? I'm, I'm, I'm shocked you didn't knock on the knocker. I, I was a little afraid. I was a little knocker. afraid. But come on in, man. So everything, uh, it's a little bit in shambles because for the last um, six years, we have been filming the Aladdin 3477 trilogy. So a lot of this, I kind of started building up with my dad years and years ago, but as soon as we started production for the movie, I kind of moved his help to you know, helping <laughs> crew and stuff. So now we're finally getting back into it. Right. But, uh, I can't wait to show you the work in progress and uh, everything yeah. happening. At the, dream, the, the dream factory is what, uh, is what I call this place. I'm super excited for this. So that you kind of doing a lot of the 3477 stuff in house is like some of the props and everything yeah well i've got a lot of the props here and we only filmed actually up here we filmed the inside of the princess's spaceship and then in the backyard we filmed the spa scene and actually hong kong we built this miniature city all throughout the backyard and uh, i'll show you some of that uh, okay. a little bit later it's uh, but it's crazy it was uh uh, you would not believe that it was a backyard in the <laughs> It's pretty wild. This is uh, Anakin Skywalker. He kind of works <laughs> off if anyone if anyone breaks <laughs> in and uh, potential robbers or something like that, they just see this guy staring at him, you know, right through the front door. <laughs> Have you ever seen the, the show Dexter before? Yeah. It's, okay, uh... so don't, don't mind the plastic sheets <laughs> as you enter this house. That is uh, Darth Maul, Darth and that Maul. also is one of the, um, That's a, 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 I think that's a, either a Pepsi exclusive or a, um, I don't know what that was, but I also have the, uh, the floating the droid. Sith Pro Droid. Is this a custom? It is, it's a custom, it's custom for me, but the funny thing, it's, uh, I'm an honorary member of the 501st Legion of Stormtroopers, and um, when I got fitted for this, I had just gotten back from uh, Japan and I had lost a ton of weight. And uh, so since it doesn't, like my love handles kind of come out the sides <laughs> a little bit, but uh, when no one's looking, I'll go running around the house Man. and I put the whole thing on. I don't know that I would sleep. This here, uh, this is one of my, um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, if I should frame it or what, but uh, one day I got this package from uh, Bad oh. Robot, and then there was this envelope, handwritten, look at this, a letter from J.J. Abrams. What? Oh my gosh. This here, this is uh, this is a cover I did for RoboCop, and it was uh, a comic book written by Frank Miller. If you know anything about RoboCop, RoboCop takes place in futuristic Detroit. Right. So I thought, oh my gosh, I'm just gonna paint RoboCop in front of the Detroit skyline. So I'll never forget, I actually did this as a demo for one of my classes I teach at Macomb College in the area here. And, uh, and you can, when I did the painting, you could see more of the city without the uh, UPC symbol on there. But as soon as I finished the painting, a student came in late, kind of looked over my shoulder and said, what's RoboCop doing in Canada? And I said, uh, he's not in Canada. And he's like, uh, yeah, he is. And I said, no, that's Detroit. It's the Detroit skyline. And he goes, uh, yeah, as seen from Windsor. And I was like, oh my gosh. So don't tell don't tell anyone attack on show, but this is Canadian <laughs> Robocop. I'm curious if you know what this is. That looks so familiar. You know this one. I do know this one. You have chosen mm -hmm. wisely. Indiana Jones. Yes! Yes! Speaking of, uh, speaking of Indiana Jones, this right here is the initial sketch that I did to get the Indiana Jones map approved uh, for uh, through Lucasfilm. So in the initial sketch that I did, originally it was just gonna be all of the items that he finds kind of throughout the movies. Uh, but then the one that we actually did took me three years because it's all of the artifacts, I had to do the, all the research for it, it's all of the artifacts that Indiana Jones found in the movies, the young Indiana Jones Chronicles TV oh. shows, 
all of the novels, all of the comics, all of the video games, and all of the Disney theme park rides. Wow. Um, but I actually made a mistake on this one, and the mistake that I made is I put in the Grail tablet, but Donovan actually found the Grail tablet. Tablet. Indiana Jones found Sir Richard's shield, so it's corrected on the uh, on the uh, initial one. But when it got so approved, this is, uh, this is a real collector's item right here. Though. Yeah, yeah. This is the uh, it's the, uh, it's the original sketch. <laughs> the Eye of Ra. Have you no? Have you spotted those two in the Clone Wars? Are you uh, no a big Clone Wars fan? They're both yeah. in it. Yeah. What the Eye of Ra and the um, Ark of the Covenant? Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. So, uh, interesting. Yeah, little well, Easter egg. It's, if you want to see another Easter egg on the uh, headpiece to the Staff of Ra, oh. here is one. Right here. Can we heat this up? I and was burn just going to say, if you like. <laughs> Do you know what this is? Uh, I have a. Is that off a video game? Yes. Uh, is it Silent? Uh, oh, what's the name of it? Silent Hill. It is Silent Hill. It's his <laughs> pyramid head. One of my favorites. That is cool. What's the story on this guy up here? That is actually a uh, a Shailaja Sentry, and um, it is one of the first robots that you will see in Aladdin 3477. Oh. It's puppeteered, and I think I puppeteered all of the Shea Century, so that was, um, you don't really see me in the movies. I do have a cameo in the second movie, but uh, but uh, a lot of the times I'm puppeteering um, a lot of the robots and stuff. <laughs> Uh, this is the Asian market um, Darth Vader print, and there's a little, uh, I remarked it with a little sketch of Darth Vader. So this is, um, this I did for a crow wall scroll, and um, the, uh, the neat thing with this one, um, I usually put secret messages in my work, so if you look closely at this bottle right here, it says Joe was here. Joe was a student that I had, uh, he was a deaf student. Uh, uh, but he loved the crow. The crow was his favorite, and so I immortalized him by putting him into the uh, that is amazing. into this painting. But a funny story behind this: I had a buddy come over once. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, this is the crow, right? So I had a buddy who came over for five minutes. He was look, he was just staring at this, and then finally, when he turned and walked away, he goes, oh, "God, Heath Ledger was so good as the Joker." <laughs> oh no, oh, no. <laughs> This is the uh, this is the Death Star droid um, from uh, Star Wars: A New Hope. So this here, this is um, the Aladdin thirty four seventy seven oh. closet. This is not even this is a sliver of the costumes that we made for the movie. I believe. If I'm not mistaken, I think there's over 300 costumes that wow. we made for the entire trilogy. These are just the main characters. So this is a lot of the main characters throughout the trilogy. So there's Aladdin, Umi, the princess. There's some of the bounty hunters. Uh, the princess has all different ornate things. So some of this stuff we uh, made from scratch and actually sewed by hand. Um, this is one here, this jacket here. Oh, wow. So this was all pieced together. It's got kind of a cool futuristic look so this was made by hand and then some stuff was just way too intricate we had uh, um, this right here is the Sultan's jacket the Sultan. and, Wow uh, the, I mean there's just no way we could make something that ornate yeah, you know yeah so uh, and it's interesting you were, you were talking before about Aladdin that in this project you had to build basically everything mm -hmm. from scratch outfits to every single set to, I mean you couldn't like you say just go to a house that yeah fit the part you had to design everything that and, was the every outfit that was kind of the madness usually for an independent film um, most people would make either a romantic comedy or they make a horror movie or they make a, a mob movie not that there's anything wrong with that those are great but it's a lot easier because if you just need someone to drive in a car, who's got a car? Right. Or uh, so they're they're going, they're having a nice dinner. Uh, do you have a suit? Do you have a nice dress? <laughs> okay, wear that. We could never do that. So every single outfit had to be something we either made or um, in some cases we could buy something elaborate. But every set had to be built. We couldn't just shoot in a restaurant. We had to make a restaurant wow. because it had to be something special.
want to highlight here one of my favorite the, the holiday specials. Oh, yeah. This is uh, this is fantastic. Thank you. So this is. Um, uh, I remember the holiday special very well when it came out, and um, it's not very good, but the cartoon was the first appearance of Boba Fett, right. and that was a really, really neat thing, so I thought it'd be cool to kind of paint it as if it were like a feature film, like yeah. what it would have been like if this would have been our Because you have the movie look, I noticed like the colors, it's more of the movie. Interesting, I like that that's the rifle that they incorporated now for Mandalorian, yeah, for Mandalorian. And they pulled from that, that yeah. little short. Oh, that's uh, that is also Lochan Shyamal. So this is um, it's like Lochan Easter, Shyamal. Yeah. That. So this isn't um, <laughs> this isn't spoiling too much, but the main villain in um, Aladdin thirty four seventy seven, he kind of has two looks. So this look is uh, when you see him, it's a little more. It's not as threatening, and you're not as sure about his character. Okay. And then uh, and then the way that he really looks is more uh, diabolical looking. Wow. I mean, the detail and what you named here is insane. I love yeah, it. The eye lights up and stuff. Oh, does it? Yeah, I like that. This here, this was one of the days uh, filming that someone took a photo of me directing. This is from the okay. second movie. Uh, there's a scene that takes place uh, uh, on the water uh, with some boats and stuff. That's so you uh, filmed all cool. three simultaneously? Just yeah. For, uh, for actually, the, the once we started filming with actors, it was five years almost to the day. Wow. Now the editing is the fun part. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of footage is running through. So, <laughs> speaking of uh, of the look of Aladdin, this right here is the Taj Mahal, and this is in the future. This is where the Sultan of India and the Princess of India live. In the movie, you've seen it. We have it uh, on a turntable, and it's composited into the sky, but it looks like it's slowly spinning around like that. Okay, yeah. very cool. This here, this is, um, I don't know, I think the batteries died in it. It's holding the thermal detonator. Yeah, this is the thermal detonator. Normally, no way. It, um, it lights up and it makes, you know, the fun noise. That is awesome. Uh, but it's got some good weight to it, too. Oh, yeah. It's holding a thermal detonator. <laughs> this is kind of just the, the, the basic stuff up here, but the real fun. Basic? I mean, who's level? The real fun <laughs> is downstairs. I'm excited for that. See you downstairs? I definitely want to All see All right, come on down. All right, so this is um, this is the cave. And um, uh, one of the things when I was a kid, uh, I had a great childhood. I'm not knocking you know my childhood at all. But uh, my parents didn't have a lot of money, or at least they didn't give me a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but, uh, so I loved video games. I loved like old school, like okay. arcades and stuff. I didn't have money to play, so I would just watch my friends play. So I always promised myself when I got older, I would have my own arcade where me and all my friends could play for free. And so that's exactly what I've done. And I had this- Did we just become best friends? <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing is I had this idea in my head after watching people play all these years, once I get my own cabinets, my own arcade machines, like I'm probably gonna be pretty good, right? Yeah, you're master. I'm, I'm awful. <laughs> I'm noticing a T800 head that's standing up. That's yes, that is pretty wicked. So there's there's that there's the the uh, fertility idol from uh, Indiana Jones. One of the things I didn't realize until I uh, picked up one of these, when you look at it up close, there's a reason why they call it a, fertri a fertility idol, and that's because she's having a baby, and the baby <laughs> is is uh, popping out right there. Check this out. How this awesome right is here. That? This is uh, Darth Vader. He usually is hanging out in the shower, and I think. He is tall. Look at that. Yeah, he is pretty. He's, uh... He is pretty tall. So that that's the trick for a lot of these. When you get the, um, this is one of the uh, costumes, not from the movie, but this is uh, one of the replica costumes. But finding a, a mannequin that's big enough. To, to hold um, him right. Yeah. Yeah. What's, it's intimidating just standing next to it, knowing there's nothing there. But it is yeah. intimidating. Just... <laughs> you know, it's a little less intimidating. So. <laughs> I just I found a mannequin that was like I don't know, six four or something like that. So I was like, okay, well I have to get this mannequin for Darth Vader. But the funny thing about the mannequin, usually when you get mannequins, they're for 
fashion and like Hudson's or some department store. So what's funny is underneath this Darth Vader costume, it's really just this sassy kind of pose <laughs> like this. This right here is artwork uh, that Ricky Rocket made. He's, from, he's the drummer from the band Poison. And um, so this piece is great because um, he used to really be into pinstriping. He was uh, pinstriping motorcycles and he did an entire art show where he pinstriped toilet seats. And I think he actually used to do it on tour as a joke. After he got tired, you know how rock stars are always tearing up hotel rooms and stuff like that. He thought for one tour, wouldn't it be funny instead of like throwing TV sets through windows? What if he pit, what if on, in the hotel, you know, the toilet, he'd stay in a really nice room. What if he just pinstriped the toilet seat? Because then how mad can they be? Because right. it's like it's vandalism, no. but at the same time, like wow, that looks really nice, you know. <laughs> so anyway, so he did this one. This one is actually based off of the White Snake logo. Okay. And my favorite part is the title of this toilet seat is "Here I Go Again on My Throne." This is the recording Whoa. studio, and everything is kind of in shambles right now. But this is um, this is where I used to record a lot of stuff. This used to be the live room back here. But all of the artwork in here is art that I've done for different bands, um, Foo Fighters. Jack Black Sabbath, uh, Motley Crue. Uh, this is one of the shirts I did for Hard Rock Cafe. Uh, Marilyn Manson, Beastie Boys. Uh, wow. This is um, promotion for a, a Beatles book that I worked on called The White Album. So that's a piece for that. That's artwork I did for Alice Cooper. This is a, uh, you're not gonna see these peeps until the second and third movie. Oh, okay. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere here. Other side. But the, uh, cool. So there's gonna be a lot like the the helmet upstairs. You said the ring light lit up as well. Uh, yeah, I that's mean, a, it, it's a different kind of light, but yeah, yeah, it lights up the whole. Yeah, there's all. So a lot of these light up. If you look um, over this big blue thing, there's a life size IG88 that's standing <laughs> way back in the uh, in the corner. <laughs> So this Whoa. is my uh, office. Are you a fan of Hellboy? No. There's a handle in there. <laughs> okay. Isn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> fits, it this. fits like a glove, right? <laughs> that is <That's> cool. <laughs> it's a replica of what the stunt people would uh, when they were doing the stunts. Oh, okay. So more just like the running in there. Yeah, like the exactly. Way. This is where I work on editing for Aladdin. This is Lochan Shimal. This is the main villain right here. I like this here. The orange is very cool. Thank you. Yeah. That is the uh, that's the Red Star Slag Warrior, and this is one of the bounty hunters right here that you'll see in the first movie as well. Okay. And then this here, this is our first award. This is at the Hong Kong Business Awards uh, a year ago. Uh, we got most anticipated film project, Aladdin thirty four seventy seven. Isn't that crazy? It seems fitting. I'm, I'm peeking around. Oh yeah, so this here, this is actually all of the storyboards from just the first That's movie. part one? This is just part one. <laughs> this is all of the storyboards, so you can see the entire movie. So you wrote the script first, and then did you come back, did you do all this yourself as well? Yeah, and, and you know what, it was a lot easier for me to storyboard each scene before we got to it. So I wrote everything first but I didn't want to storyboard everything ahead of time. Sometimes it was um, it was easier for me, for example, to design action scenes after we had a set. So like I had all these ideas in my head, but sometimes once we had the set, I would come up with ideas like, oh, wouldn't it be great if Aladdin rolls under the table? Right. What if this guy gets pinned up against here? Um, it was just a lot easier to see what I was working with to come up with a lot of that. This here is Fiji. This is Aladdin's sidekick. Oh, cool. It's puppeteered, so... Fiji? Fiji. I love it. And Fiji was one of the first characters, actually, when I was in college, before I knew I was going to do an Aladdin trilogy, when I started writing my, um, my magnum opus. I wanted to make a trilogy of, uh, of sci-fi um, movies 
Originally, it was this intergalactic con artist named Castar Shandax, and he had this little robot named Fiji that would kind of float uh, right by his shoulder. Is this kind of the Abu to Aladdin, or? Yeah, and it, and it, it just kind of ended up being that way, because at first, I like Aladdin had nothing to do with it, but there were elements to my story that I felt were kind of Aladdin-like, and okay. then over time, I just thought that was uh, the way to go is just to steer it more towards Aladdin. And even though the story, the kind of basic setup is there, like Aladdin, but it's um, it's it feels more like Indiana Jones or Star Wars, more adventure-like, right. and then the scope of it is more like Lord of the Rings. It is just this huge, epic oh. story, lots of new characters. And, uh, well, the production's certainly very Lord of the Rings, doing all three yeah, at and once. Yeah, filming them back and, to back, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, uh, yeah. I'm excited of the world that this is going to create just from the detail of, of everything we've seen so far. I can't Thank wait you. to see this, the, the, the footage here. I'm awesome. so excited. Yeah, well, I'm going to show you guys something. <laughs> okay, Shots. I'll show you. This is, um, we built a miniature city of Kong Chiam. largest outdoor sets that we built for Aladdin 3477 is the Kong Chiam Marketplace. So by design we created these outfits for the klepto runners where you can't really see who they are underneath. There's like this mesh that kind of goes over their face. I thought I had a cool theater but this is amazing. Uh, grab a seat. I'm gonna grab a front row. So in here is a drawing. Is this your drawing studio? This is. Yeah. Come on in. This is. Yeah. I can't let you off the hook just yet because okay. the tag on show. We always have to ask you the five questions to see if you achieve attacker status. So oh, are you ready for the challenge? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 